Hello, my name's Kevin Mulrennan and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Thank You Lucky Stars. For those of you that aren't aware of Thank You Lucky Stars, it was a, a pop programme shown in the UK on the ITV channel, ABC Weekend Television, and it was shown from 1961 all the way through to the middle of 1966. So quite an interesting period pre-Beatles, and then the Beatles came along and the show reflected the changes in the musical trends. Got a couple of props I'm going to use tonight. The first one is the first edition of my book. This came out in 2004 and um, I've updated this and it's about 100 pages long, but the new edition is about 700 plus, maybe 750. As you can see on the cover, it's from the 200th show. You see various people on there, you've got members of the searchers along there. Janice Nichols, of course, famous for Spinner Disc. This lady here is called Jackie Cryer. She used to do fashion and dancing on the show. Here's some of the dancers here, probably the Joe Cook dancers. They were the resident group in the, the later stages. I'll just flip this round now. And you can see Pete Murray there, a the very famous radio legend and TV legend there, along with another couple of members of the dancers, the Joe Cook people, probably. You've got uh, members of the Seekers along here and uh, Helen Shapiro, very nice there, goofing it up for the cameras along with the hosts, Jim Dale, and you've got Brian Matthew along there as well. So I'm gonna be referring to that book as we go along. I'm also going to use this. This is an original script from the show uh, from 1962. Very interesting document, bought this about well, best part 20 years ago now on eBay. They're quite rare. Um, I've only ever seen four others really advertised on eBay. Um, they were a bit pricey. They were priced about £80 each. And at the time, I needed a computer. So I decided, well, I'll go for investing in the computer so I can write about the show. It's about, um, about 16, 17 odd pages long. Um, different colours. I'll just flip through there. Different coloured paper as you go along. Uh, an interesting document that kind of details the show. So well done to whoever rescued that. I believe it was just thrown in a bin at the end of the, the recording and somebody had the foresight to pick it up. So I'm going to be referring to, to that. It starts off on that page. You've got all the, the basic info, camera script, and it gives the, the people that are going to appear, um, schedule times, lots of interesting details, which I can read from the book just there. So turning to the, the script itself, I've got a chapter on the actual script. Um, it goes on, Thank You Lucky Stars, introduced by Brian Matthew. The original host of the show was Pete Murray. Then it became um, Brian Matthew along with Keith Fordyce. Brian took over and then later on, of course, you had Jim Dale, as well as uh, various other guest DJs that uh, filled in for holidays and sickness and things like that. So on this particular show, uh, we've got uh, Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine, Clinton Ford, Marion Ryan. She was the mother, of course, of um, Paul and Barry Ryan, the twins. And you've got Little Richard. This was his first appearance in the UK for five years. He'd gone off and done other things. That's another story, as it were. And you've also got John Layton, the actor comes singing along there. Dion also appears. He was a VTR insert because he had to jet in and out of the country and so on. Guest DJ was Jimmy Savile, who did Spin a Disc, which we'll discuss later on, the Spin a Disc phenomenon. Um, also, we've got the dancers. There's uh, Linda Lee, um, Jenny Chevalier, Judy Jason, Mandy, Bob Driscoll and uh, Mike Flynn. Judy Jason is mentioned in a little clip from the NME. There's a picture of her and um, Ken Dodd, so regular dancers on the show. It's really such a shame that there's no footage um, of this period, really, apart from one little VTR um, little clip of uh, Gene Pitney. Uh, but sadly, as far as we know, there's no audio, there's no video at all of this show. So the only thing we've got in detail, thankfully, is the camera script. Uh, we've got design by Douglas James. He was quite famous and um, was associated with the show and directed, of course, by the maestro Philip Jones, who, who really was the, 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 the kind of guiding force behind the show 
later became a real big rig in television, head of Thames Television and so on. Uh, production assistant, we've got Gene Fenton, technical supervisor, Stan Broughton, and various other um, names which will follow. So um, we've got lots of information. I'll just flip over here, bear with me. Lighting supervisor was Fred Bentham. Um, we've got uh, cameras, John Clark. And um, camera rehearsal was filmed on a Sunday. It was always generally on a Sunday that they gathered in Aston, just up the road, about three or four miles down the road from me there. And this is Sunday, the 7th of October, 1962, at the Alpha Television Studios, Aston Road North. Birmingham. The VTR uh, time was two, uh, 8 15 to 9 o'clock at night. Transmission was the following Saturday, uh, the 13th of October 1962, at 10 to 6. There was a playback, very interesting, a playback on Monday, the uh, 8th of October, 11 o'clock till 11 45 a.m. at Hanover Square, Teddington, the press lounge. So members of the press could look at the show write about it in the Daily Mirror, Daily Herald, whatever program, uh, whatever paper they work for along there. So that's uh, the main info from the first page. Page two continues with some technical details about the filming and the artist calls and so on. So they called them up. Clinton Ford, for instance, was called up at 10 o'clock and he had all the dancers with him. So presumably because it was a bit more complex, they got him in early and rehearsed with uh, those dancers along there. Then they called John Layton, then Marion Ryan, Little Richard, and Terry, Foot's Light, Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine. Uh, they've got the actual players here, clarinet, uh, trumpet, trombone, piano, bass, banjo, and drums. All mined, of course. It was a mined show, so um, no live recordings, as it were. Then you had Brian Matthew and the preparations for the spinner disc panel. We've actually got the names of the people as well as the normal uh, person, Janice Nichols, very famous of course. We had Delia Dalton and Michael Webb. So they, they cast people from all around the country, from North and South. Then it gives various details about the cameras that they needed and the sound and so forth. And a schedule. So you've got the camera rehearsal there at 10 o'clock, lunch break, one o'clock, Camera rehearsal in the afternoon at uh, two o'clock. You had a supper break. Then they lined them up and then you had the final VTR in the evening. The programme was scheduled to last 32 minutes and five seconds. And there was one advert break of a couple of minutes, two minutes and five seconds. So I'll start to read some of the actual text that I've, I've written from, from the actual um, script. Now we move on to the show itself. It starts off a bit like the surviving Merseyside special with Brian speaking whilst we see the captions of the artists that are, that are to appear. Brian continues talking on tape over the film. And he says the following, I'm not going to try and imitate Brian, of course, um, I'm just gonna just read the text uh, so you get a flavor of what they, what they what was said. There's discs are plenty in the show with the most there's this a plenty in the show with the most. TV's own Top of the Pops. Thank you, lucky stars. Tonight's All Star Hit Parade presents, then they showed the photo captions Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine, Clinton Ford, Marion Ryan, Little Richard, Dion, and John Layton. This was spun by Brian Matthew. Brian then continues and says the following. Hello and welcome to the show. Glad you decided to join us again this week. We're pretty sure you'll be glad you did too, because tonight we'll bring you some of the most exciting artists and sounds from both sides of the Atlantic. Let me first introduce you to our panel of, skin, of Spinner Disc. In the second half of the show, Janice and her two colleagues here will be listening and talking about some of the latest American releases. Of course, Spinner Disc was a very famous part of the show devised by a man called Alan Freeman, not Alan Fluff Freeman, but a bloke called Alan A. Freeman, who was an A&R man who worked, I believe, for one of the record companies, I think it was Pi. And basically, it's a straight ripoff, really, of jukebox jewellery. So you had this played, the teenagers and the guest DJ would listen to it and offer comments. 
give a mark, say whether, you know, based on whether they thought it would uh, be a hit or a miss. And uh, a useful thing, particularly for the American releases, because A, the American artists might not be here. B, it was difficult for them to get visas because you had to kind of swap if an English artist, um, if an American artist appeared in England, generally had to have uh, vice versa, uh, an English artist or a British artist appearing in the States due to the union laws. So maybe one day I might do a little uh, look at the spinner discs that have survived and we can discuss that. Uh, let me just find a place here for you. Well, to get things started, we're going to listen to a new British disc. As usual, for our opening record, we've chosen one of the new trad issues. And this time, it's a great version of one of the most famous songs from a famous musical. In fact, from South Pacific, here's Baha'i, played by Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine. I do hope I've pronounced that right, but I'm, I'm not a musical expert. So if I've pronounced that wrong, you can put it in the comments down below. Then we have Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine, who then performed. Brian then says, Baha'i given a new bright treatment by Terry Lightfoot's Jasmine. And now here's an artist who always gives a high, uh, a bright treatment to everything he records. A man who has brought back all the warmth and humour of old time music hall to the present day pop scene. His latest release gives us, gives you the real lowdown on a certain lady called Madame Moscovich. And here he is, Clinton Ford. Clinton Ford was a, a vaudeville revivalist, really, who uh, was very popular in the early 60s and gave his little modern twist, really, on the old musical vaudeville acts, obviously with a, a strong sense of humour. And a, an important aspect of the show, it wasn't just a straight pop show, there was a lot of showbiz entertainment, which is, which is why I find it very interesting, because I'm also interested in the comedy and the social context, so it's all... Very, very interesting, uh, the, the flavour of Thank You Lucky Stars there. Just going to have a sip of my water here, so do bear with me. And Brian continues then after um, Clinton Ford. In my crystal ball, I see many people queuing up to buy their copy of that wonderful record by Clinton Ford, Madame Moscovich. And before these clairvoyant powers dwindle, let's take another look at the future. I see a gram glamorous lady with a most exciting personality, and she appears to be about to sing. I think it will be a ballad by hit writer Norman Newell called No Love But Your Love, and I'm sure that she is Marion Ryan. And then we have the disc would turn round. If you've seen the surviving footage of Thank You Lucky Stars, they always had a picture of the artist in the middle of the disc. The disc would go round. And then the artist would mine to their the, the latest record. Generally, it was only one side that they did. But if they were um, pop royalty, like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, or any any of the top bands of the day, they might do the A side, then the B side, and sometimes they used to do EP tracks, LP tracks. And it has been known that you know some artists would would in a special do four songs. So quite a wide variety along there. I'll move on to the next bit of the script. Thank you very much, Marion, for letting us letting us hear that lovely new song, No Love But Your Love. Now, to close the first part of our show, it's excitement all the way from one of the American artists in our cast tonight. An artist whom I know many people here have been looking forward to for some time to seeing and hearing. He's going to feature two of his records tonight. And first of all, Here's one that was a really big hit here in Britain, Babyface, sung by Little Richard. So Little Richard had had a little pause, a little hiatus, and went off to do religious studies, and he was just coming back. So he, he, it's actually mentioned, in, Brian mentions in his book, that um, he was a little rusty and he was a bit worried, and a bit preoccupied during the show because he was thinking he, were, um, he, was, he was going on tour around Britain. And he was a little bit nervous, as it were, having been off the scene for quite a while there. Uh, he did Babyface. So when I think of Babyface, I always think of the Kinks. The Kinks are one of my favourite bands. And on um, 1972 Celluloid Heroes, the double album, and there's part of the, the, the concert there from, I think it's New York, and they play Babyface along there. So whenever I hear that, I always think of the Kinks and Ray Davis. 
So little Richard performs Babyface and he got what he wanted. And Brian says afterwards, wasn't that wonderful? Little Richard just sang his latest British release and it has a pretty long title. He got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. Now, we've been telling you each week about exciting programmes to come. And here's, here are two dates to note. In a fortnight's time, we shall be introducing Mr. Top of the Pops, Frank Ifield, and a wonderful star from America, Ketty Lester. Incidentally, this will be her only television appearance in Britain. Then the week after that, we shall feature Bobby V and the Crickets. But there's plenty more in tonight's show, so stay tuned because we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Spinner Disc and songs from Dion and John Layton. So there you would have the, the commercial break, as it were. And traditionally, Spinner Disc generally was in the second part of the show. So it says, mix the four, mix the camera four, caption, lucky stars, uh, more discs to come, end of part one. Part two, Brian introduces Spinner Disc, and uh, the guest DJ was Jimmy Savile, and uh, Brian introduces the week's panel, Janice, uh, Delia Dalton, and Michael Webb. So presumably then, uh, we don't know, unfortunately, the names of the records um, produced. Sometimes you get references to them in Melody Maker and Disc and so on. Um, or sometimes the audio might survive, you might know, but we don't know which records were chosen, I believe, from that. I couldn't find anything in the script uh, for that. So we have to imagine that um, they've made their comments, say, gave their marks out of five. Janice, of course, was famous for it. I'll, I'll give it five in her uh, black country accent. So Brian, after that, says, and many thanks to you, Jimmy Savile. And then there'll be applause. Next week, our guest disc jockey will be Don Moss. Don actually um, filled in for Brian on one occasion when he had a little operation. And uh, Don Moss was um, a, a guest DJ on quite a number of occasions on Spinner Disc. Q, uh, roll cue. Right, it's on with the show. And here's where we introduce another popular American artist. Recently touring Britain, He's now back in the States, but before he left, we took the little precaution of getting him into the studio so that we could see him performing his latest number, Little Diane. Yes, of course, it's Dion. So this was filmed presumably in Teddington. The show came uh, from Aston, but I would imagine uh, he'd be London based with his short tour. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Teddington Studios was used for this VTR insert. So uh, disc photo Dion uh, and a white to VTR and it's insert number 1961 and its duration was 2 minutes 44 seconds. Uh, the number ends after 2 minutes 30 and there's applause up until 2.44. And then Brian says, and that was Dion with his exciting recording Little Diane. To end the show this week, we welcome back to Thank You Lucky Stars, one of Britain's most popular artists. He has been absent from the television screens for a while, owing to heavy commitments as an actor in films. I think he also did a religious bit as well. But here he's, but he's here tonight. So while we've got him, let's listen to both sides of the song, uh, of the songs on his new uh, single release. The B-side's coming up first. So here's, ah, oh, sorry, of course, that was referring to John Layton. I got mixed up there, I do apologize. That was uh, referring to John Layton, uh, not um, not Little Richard. So here with Keep On Loving You is John Layton. So John Layton there performs Keep On Loving You and Lonely Johnny. Uh, Brian then says, and that's the top side of John Layton's new one called Lonely Johnny. It also brings us to the end of Thank You Lucky Stars for another week. But before you leave, but, but before we leave you, just listen to the lineup next week. We shall have with us the Eric Delaney Band, Susan Morn, the Brooke Brothers, Johnny DeLittle, the Carl Denver Trio, Danny Williams, and as a bonus extra, we shall uh, we shall also be featuring a demonstration of the Madison, which was a, a band from the early sixties, presumably done by Lionel Blair and his dancers. Well, that's it. We'll look forward to your company. Uh, so bye for now and we will see and see you next week. So 
I've made a little note as well. It's interesting that the, the phrase top of the pops was used a couple of times. Of course, uh, this has no reference, of course, to top of the pops, which started 1st of January 1964. So it's interesting that this, this phrase was still used. Bill Cotton, I believe, was the man who came up with the, the phrase for top of the pops there. Uh, just for a little note here, is there any chance of the VTR insert surviving? I don't know whether maybe that was separate or maybe, um, you know, the artists themselves might get a copy. That's, uh, I've never come across any, but you never know, there might be a chance of, of that along there. So basically, um, I'll just give you a quick flick through the scripts so you can have a look at the different pages. So that's page one. There's the, the next bit along there. So it gives rehearsal times and camera times and so on. Different colour, different colour on there. Presumably for the director, make it nice and easy for them to flip across there. And there's some more that the writing along there. Oh yes, yeah, that actually gives some of the lyrics along there as well. So that's quite interesting. Give us some lyrics. Yeah, quite a lot of lyrics along here. Yeah, baby face. You've got the cutest little baby face. Obviously a favourite of Ray Davis who covered it later on and the Kinks. Uh, yeah, lots of timings as well. Gives plenty of times for the directors because obviously it'd be important that they come to that. So they can have a bit of script there. Uh, commercial break. That page there. Uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. So it gives the spinner disc line up along there. It's quite a good one. Uh, cues and so on, disc photos. And they cut to the audience, of course. You've probably seen that on the surviving spinner disc along there. So it just says here um, second record. So presumably they could they could put whatever record they liked at the last minute. So the script could be done a bit beforehand, and they'd say, "Oh, we'll have that one, that one, that one." Um, I know that Philip Jones used to listen to dozens and dozens of records for uh, for Lucky Stars. Uh, so that's that along there. The yellow. So we've got different colours along here. Uh, more lyrics. What well, we got the lyrics to here? Oh uh, yeah. Keep on loving you. Chorus lyrics along there. Interesting. Page 15, rock to now. Uh, yeah, lovely. More lyrics along there. Uh, and then we have the, the final page, as it were. I've read that Philip Jones was the man who did really all the scripts. Brian himself just read um, the script that Philip Jones compiled for him. Um, Presumably did have some input though um, in, in, in the final product, as it were. And uh, you can appreciate how good Brian Jones was after my terrible reading there. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, my first little stab at doing a video. I've never done a video before. Uh, please excuse my little um, little error there when I was um, talking about jo um, John Layton and uh, little Richard. So I got a bit carried away there. But well, anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. And as I say, if you want to find out a bit more about Lucky Stars, if you go to Amazon and write in Kevin Mulrennan, that's M-U-L-R-E-N-N-A-N, or simply Lucky, thank you, Lucky Stars itself, you should be able to find a version of my book. Um, at present time, I've just done a new Kindle version, and I'm working on the final um, new version of the printed book, which is going to be about seven times as long. So like to hear your comments. Uh, please excuse, as I say, my nervousness. It's never done anything like this before. So please put some comments and any questions you've got on Lucky Stars, I will try and answer them for you. Thanks very much then.